Hey guys, today we're back in a 2023 Toyota Sequoia. This is a platinum four-wheel drive. I've been out in Dallas this week driving this and kind of using it as a family vehicle. So I'm gonna be giving you guys some thoughts on how this has been to live with, hauling the family, the kid around, and just kind of using this every day. Of course, this has the iForce Max Twin Turbo V6, makes 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque, that powertrain, that hybrid powertrain, is mated to this 10-speed automatic transmission. We have a selectable four-wheel drive system, two high, four high, and four low, multiple different drive modes. Uh, mostly just been driving this around in normal comfort eco. This new Sequoia is supposed to be more efficient. It can tow up to 9,000 pounds in this form, a little bit over the 9,000 pound mark and uh, it's rated for 19 miles to the gallon in the city and 22 on the highway. This week I've averaged about 16 and a half, 17 MPG combined, mostly city driving. So let's start off, let's walk you around this and uh, then we'll talk about what this has been like to drive and experience and live with this week. As tested, this is just shy of $79,000. Starting price MSRP on this is about 75 grand. This has a few options. It has the tow hitch, the auto leveling a rear air suspension. We have a couple other options like the head up display, which is full color. The Sequoia has 20 inch wheels. I like that those wheels have a little bit of sidewall on the tire. That's nice. And we also get these massive extendable tow mirrors. I do like the blind spot element at the bottom. Uh, they do <laughs> actually create a blind spot themselves. They're so large, they kind of block some of your view, but we'll look at that once we get back into the car. Pretty massive vehicle, this new Sequoia. I think it looks pretty good from a design standpoint. This Platinum is meant to be a little bit more luxurious and nice to drive, nice to live with. We have this front air dam down here that gives us eight degrees of approach angle. So you're not really gonna be off-roading this Sequoia if you want that capability. You gotta to go to the TRD Pro. Let's start in the back here. All right, so this is probably my least favorite thing about this Sequoia, is this rear cargo area has limited options and uh, it's not very practical to use in the real world. First of all, the load floor is insanely high. This is almost up to my chest level. If you're lifting big, heavy bags, suitcases back here, uh, it's just gonna be difficult. If you have a dog that you wanna put in the back of your Sequoia, you're gonna have to lift that dog up into here, depending on how heavy he or she is. Um, so there's some configurability. You can take this panel out, you get a bit more of an open area, but again, you've got the third row seats that are in the way. This seems sturdy enough, this piece. We had a pretty heavy suitcase resting on this earlier this week and it did fine. It seems like this would hold a lot of weight or at least a, as much weight as you'd be able to lift up in here. And then you get this tiny little trunk area down here where you can store some bags. I guess that's kind of nice because it keeps things from rolling around. You can push these third row seats forward, but again, that doesn't really give you a whole lot more versatility. So I don't know, this is just a, a little bit of a poor design and. Part of it is because of the hybrid battery pack is back here that raises that floor. And these, these third row seats are just kind of in the way. It's just weird packaging. Uh, and there are some big concessions to be made with this new hybrid Sequoia, unfortunately. It's not like the old Land Cruisers where the third row seats fold up into the sides, giving you more space to put things. Um, so, you know, you have to kind of decide if this would work for your use case and go from there. You can fold up these seats, just a single press of the button, and they both come up. And we'll see what that third row is like in the back right now. Fold up these headrests. Two buttons there, one to lower the tailgate, one to lock the vehicle. So getting into the third row is actually pretty easy. We have this nice, quick manual operation to fold the seat forward, a couple steps. And then once you're back here, you can just move this down and pull it forward. 
and I actually have a decent amount of legroom. This is a seven-seater Sequoia with two, the two captain's chairs. I've got a nice sunshade back here with full coverage on the window. Um, I could even adjust my backrest with a little motor. That's nice. Folds back pretty well. You've got a center seat. I mean, this is pretty nice. I'm limited with headroom, unfortunately, uh, but I feel like in the third row, you're gonna be putting the smaller passengers, kids, smaller adult friends back here anyway. So there just isn't a lot of room behind that third row to put things. This is about the same amount of space as we had in my Lexus GX. So you can move these third row seats forward, but of course then you lose out quite a bit on leg room. And then this folds down, but still not an ideal space back here. You can definitely see that Toyota's put an emphasis and a focus on passenger volume instead of cargo volume in this new Sequoia. These running boards are nice. They do fold up automatically. You gotta kinda get used to them because they'll come out and hit your shins when you open the door. Nice, comfortable captain's chairs in the second row. Got an armrest, rear climate control, tons and tons of legroom. Headroom again, a little bit limited with this panoramic sunroof um, that if you don't check that option, you get a bit more of a roof height back here, which is good. Rear climate control, a couple USB ports, a USB-C and type A, plug outlet, heated and ventilated rear seats back here, which is great. Pretty easy to put the car seat up in here, especially if you use those running boards. What do you guys think? Does this look like an $80,000 interior? I don't know, I don't know. There's an awful lot of plastic in here. There are some nice leather trimming elements. These seats feel good, there's some contrast stitching. You've got a lot of great features. Big screen, that's a 14 inch touch screen up there. But I don't know if this is $80,000 worth of interior in here in the Sequoia. More sunshades in the back. A lot of controls here. You can fold your mirrors in and out, extend those toe mirrors. Look at that. Nice. I mean, you know, with a 9,000 pound towing capacity, this would just be a beast out on the open road. It'd probably get pretty good fuel economy, have good range, and the power and torque from this powertrain is really hard to beat. We have two seat memory settings here. Easy to get up into with these grab handles. But again, a lot of plastic here. This feels really cheap and scratchy. For Lexus-like pricing, there are some things that you touch and use in this interior that, that don't feel very nice, to be honest. A lot of great usable space down here though. So we've got a couple of cup holders, a little bit of a bin to put things in here, and then this massive center console. You can put a big water bottle right dead center there. You've got more USB ports. You can lift this all up and put more things inside. This seems to be pretty well designed and a very usable space. There's even little change slots there for different size coins. Uh, so I do like that. Right here we have our manual adjustment for our air suspension, or we can just choose between low, normal, and high height. Uh, that is just for the rear axle, so not four-wheel air suspension. There's our glove box, nice and big. Super easy and nice to live with buttons and controls. I do really appreciate that Toyota didn't go all touchscreen Tesla in this new generation of Sequoia and Tundra. All the physical co controls and buttons in this new truck are just awesome. They're so easy to live with. They're well-placed, well-designed. It's a very ergonomically friendly vehicle to use and live with. We have a big honk and volume knob right here. This does have the JBL sound system. We'll test that out once we get out on the road. I think let's just walk you around this one more time. Let's even pop the hood and take a look at this iForce Max twin turbo 3.5 liter V6. Very nice, smooth powertrain, very quiet in its operation. I've said in other reviews of the Sequoia and the Tundra that it feels almost diesel-like in its torque delivery. 
but once you get up in the higher revs, it has really good power. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. That's definitely my favorite thing about the Sequoia is this new powertrain is great. Of course, we'll all miss the V8, but this iForce Max powertrain, I think, is very well calibrated. It drives great. Haven't had any weird issues with it this week or hiccups. It's just been flawless, smooth, comfortable, um, quiet, and reasonably fuel efficient uh, for, I think, the type of driving that I've been doing. Here's what our reverse and 360 cameras look like. A lot of nice coverage there. Really big, wide view. And of course, on this 14-inch display, I can see just about everything I need to. You can have different options for your lines, which is nice. You have a tow camera, which shows you the center of the hitch, the center of the vehicle. You can see a forward-facing camera if you put it into drive. I mean, just a good camera setup. If you're in park, you can even hit the camera button and just rotate around your Sequoia. Wheels look a little funky in that graphic, but the rest of it is all there. That's a bit of a gimmick in my mind, but otherwise the camera systems in this are very, very well done. And we get a digital rear view mirror, which I've been using a lot this week because with that third row folded up, you can't really see too well out of that rear window. But with some adjustments, it looks pretty darn good. All right. Big panoramic sunroof. Of course, with that open, it's a little bit harder to see out of that digital rear view mirror. So if we close it, it looks like that. This infotainment is pretty straightforward. Of course, CarPlay works like everything else. I do wish there were a home button to get out of CarPlay into the native Toyota system that you don't have to go back to the home screen for. But I mean, the controls here are really quite simple. You've got your music, your phone, your vehicle settings and trip information, and then all this stuff. Honestly, you're not really gonna be going in here for anything besides the native navigation, and I don't really know how, how many people still use that. They're probably gonna be in Android Auto or CarPlay. We do get wireless charging down here, which never seems to charge my phone uh, with an Apple case, so it just kinda sits down there flashing the whole time. Luckily, you get a USB port right here, which you can plug in and charge your device down there. Like I said earlier, tons of different drive modes, Eco Comfort, Normal Sport, Sport Plus. We'll just leave this in normal today and play around a little bit in eco, but yeah, this is a very smooth and easy car to drive. The only thing I've had to get used to this week is just its sheer size. It is pretty big on the road, but that's nothing new with it with the Toyota Sequoia. It's always been a larger full-size SUV, and uh, with these mirrors, it's actually a little bit easier to place because you can see your blind spots pretty well. Listen to that throaty growl from that 3.5 liter iForce Max powertrain. Makes a good noise. Kind of a unique sound. Decent visibility out of this Toyota Sequoia. Let's check the turning radius here. Not too bad. Heated steering wheel will burn your mittens off. Heated seats are just as hot, which is great. You're not gonna freeze in this. I haven't tested out the ventilated seats yet since this has been a pretty chilly week in Dallas. Ride quality is okay. It's a little bit on the stiff side, especially in the back, especially in that third row, centered over that axle, that rear axle with the air suspension, it can get a bit bouncy. And I think part of that is just keeping up with this Sequoia's tow rating. So I wouldn't mind just a bit better ride quality out of this Sequoia. I'm not sure if this has adaptive dampers or not. It probably does. And if Toyota were to tune those a bit 
more comfortably. That would be nice. Steering is light though. All of your inputs are very, very easy. Gonna be threading the needle through this construction zone here. It definitely drives better than previous generations of Sequoia. It's more nimble. The steering is a little bit better. I mean, you know, it's just, it's got a lot of power and the brakes keep up well enough. I think overall this, this does drive great. I don't have too many complaints about the driving dynamics. The road manners here are about what you'd expect for a large full-size SUV. It kind of lumbers along, uh, steering is light, but has a pretty slow ratio. You gotta, you gotta kind of take your time wheeling this around town and being careful where you place it because it is so big. Riding over bumps, NVH is pretty good. In the back, again, it gets a little bit louder, a little bit noisier. You can hear the suspension, the tires over bumps. But as a driver, I feel pretty well isolated in the front of the Sequoia. We have a super high commanding driving position. And you want to kind of get up high in the seat too, especially if you have these tow mirrors so you can see over them slightly. Cruise control buttons, pretty easy to operate, super straightforward. You can see in the head-up display your distance control and your lane centering. I haven't used lane centering too much this week, but it seems to work about as well as it does in a lot of other new Toyota products. Distance control, again, same story. Love these big buttons, they're easy to read. You can pretty much feel them out without having to look down at them. A little bit of wind noise at speed from this front area, but otherwise it's pretty quiet. I do like the steering feel in this new Sequoia. It kind of gives you this good idea of what the road texture is like. see right now we're braking off throttle the engine is turned off and we are just coasting in hybrid mode all right so while we're sitting at this red light let's listen to a quick demonstration of this JBL sound system Thank you. 
JBL sounds pretty good. One of the better JBL systems in the Toyota lineup for sure. Nothing to compare to like a Mark Levinson sound system or anything like that, but still sounds pretty good to my ear. All right, so how can we sum up this Toyota Sequoia? Well, I think in platinum trim, I'm struggling to see the value here for almost $80,000. This is just a lot of money for something that is almost LX pricing. But I think with a lower trim, if you get into the mid 60s or under $70,000 with one of these, that's pretty good value. It's a very usable vehicle. It can tow a lot, it can haul your family, haul your things with a few caveats. I think the concessions here made with the rear cargo area are a bit unfortunate and that that could be a deal breaker for some people but the rest of this sequoia has been really nice to live with it's a great vehicle to drive on a daily basis i love the modern tech here this big screen is great um you know it's it's comfortable enough it's just that the price tag is so high on these new full-size suvs that that's a big pill to swallow and a big monthly payment to have to live with. So you kind of have to decide if this vehicle's capabilities and modern updates and amenities are worth it over going for an older Sequoia that may be used, that's still gonna be bulletproof reliable. I'm sure Toyota's done their due diligence and hard work on this new iForce Max powertrain, and I'm sure it'll be very good over a long period of time. It will be a little bit more efficient, but I think in the real world, only just a little bit. This only has 1,700 miles on it, so it's not really broken in completely yet, so I assume fuel economy will improve after it gets five or 6,000 miles on the engine. But again, that hasn't been the best performance this week. I was expecting slightly better fuel economy in the city with this. So anyway, to sum up, there's a lot of things I do like that Toyota has done with this new Sequoia, and there are some things that I think you need to kind of look at and consider to the competition with price practicality um, you know how long are you going to hold on to this vehicle this is something that you're going to hold on to only for a few years you might want to look at some of the competitors if this is a vehicle that you're going to want to hold on to for a decade or so it might be a pretty good up might be a pretty good option might be a pretty good buy especially with the land cruiser not being sold in the united states anymore and uh, lx is commanding a real price premium these days Here's a good example of it in hybrid mode, just cruising around in this neighborhood, about 20 miles per hour, engine is off, you can hear that whirring of the electric motor and the speaker under the car. But with just a little bit of throttle, the engine will kick on and go into gasoline mode. Off throttle, the engine will turn off. We are in eco mode now, so that'll put a little bit more of a priority on hybrid driving. But again, it's not like Toyota's hybrids with their eCVTs where you're always in that electric power zone and uh, you're saving a lot of fuel. It's very difficult to drive this in EV mode. That said though, the transitions here are completely seamless and the tuning is excellent. All right guys, that'll be a wrap on our 2023 Toyota Sequoia Platinum Review. Hopefully this gave you guys some insight into what this new Sequoia is like to live with. In addition to some of the videos that we've already put out there, it's always nice to spend some more time in these cars and just kind of live with them for a few days and kind of figure out some more ins and outs, what you like, what you don't like. So anyway, that'll be it for this one. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Those massive mirrors do automatically fold in when you lock the vehicle, which is nice.